and military headlines, there's a lot to go over. Buckle up, this is going to go fast. First up, the British Army has lifted a more than 100-year ban on beards for troops. After consulting everyone from politicians to King Charles, the Army decided to allow the facial hair. Previously, only mustaches were allowed. The new allowance is already in effect, so troops can put down the razor, provided they keep their beard within regs. Britain now joins Denmark, Germany, and Belgium in the Bearded Forces Club in Europe. Also from England this week, the British Army says it'll celebrate the first of its next-generation main battle tanks rolling off the production line. We could sum it up for you, but let's just hear the Scottish soldier do it instead. On the 18th of April, an event will be held to celebrate the first prototypes of our new main battle tank, the Challenger 3, coming off the production line at RBSL Telford. Challenger 3 is Defence's only fully digitised anti-armour capability. Its production provides skilled jobs in the UK and offers export opportunities. Did you catch all that? What an accent. Now, on to the US. The Navy has announced that several of its top shipbuilding programs are one to three years behind schedule as the service and industrial base grapple with workforce and management issues. Coupled with delays to Virginia-class attack submarine production and worries those delays might spill over to Columbia-class ballistic missile subs, the backlogs have caused concern. Changes to the supply chain with roots in the COVID-19 pandemic are partly to blame, Navy officials said, along with workforce shortages. The problems also impact the Navy's next nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, the forthcoming Enterprise, which relies on the same suppliers and is expected to deliver around two years later than intended. Also from the Navy, photos have emerged showing that some Navy pilots have resurrected the practice of placing victory marks on the fuselages of their aircraft. The images showed up on fighter jets assigned to the carrier Dwight D. Eisenhower in the Middle East, where pilots and crews are conducting strikes against Houthi targets in the region. The practice dates back to World War II, when pilots started tracking kills on the sides of their planes. Navy vessels also used to track ships sunk with marks on their hulls. In the Air Force, for the first time in four years, the F-35 Lightning has been cleared to fly in Lightning. Since 2020, some of America's most premier fighter jets have been restricted from flying within 25 miles of lightning after a problem was found with the system designed to protect the planes from strikes. The problem only affected F-35As, not the B or C models. The Air Force said it lifted the restriction on March 19. Now on to the Army. Soldiers from the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, are the first Army unit equipped with the service's next-generation squad weapons. The troops received the weapons and got to do an unboxing event to check out their sleek new firearms. Images from the release showed soldiers taking the freshly delivered squad weapons from packaging and assembling them. Officially called the XM-7, the rifle is slated to replace the M4 carbine, while the XM-250 variant will replace the M249 squad automatic weapon. These weapons will drop the X nomenclature once they are fully fielded. The new weapons both utilize the 6.8 mm round, replacing the 5.56 round used since Vietnam. Lackluster performance of the 5.56 round in Afghanistan gun battles spurred the study that led to the change. The new 6.8 mm round has a longer effective range that provides more power against enemies wearing modern armor.